Bloomberg Audio Studios. Podcasts, radio, news. And a pleasure to welcome Bloomberg's global TV and radio audiences here to Chicago, Illinois. Indeed, the site of the Democratic National Convention now in day three. I'm Joe Matthew alongside Kaylee Lyons and a special guest as Democrats are still trickling into Chicago. One of them is the mayor of New York City, Eric Adams, joining us here at the table on our set in Chicago. Mr. Mayor, welcome. It's good to see you. Thank you very much. Great to be here. Well, you're joining the party here as to something that's been a a pretty energetic uh, rally so far in Chicago. And we've heard from New York's governor. We heard from Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. How come the mayor of the world's biggest city isn't speaking tonight? Well, you know, you have uh, a real focus, and I think this campaign is doing something that's extremely uh, smart. Uh, we feel strong in New York. We have very uh, few other areas that we need to focus on. And the goal is not to get Eric Adams on the stage. The goal is to get VP Harris and the team elected. And they're putting together the right speakers. And we're just going to find out what is our role. And we're going to carry the ball based on that. So you may not be a messenger on the stage at this convention, but that doesn't mean necessarily that there might not be a message you would advocate for, not yes. just given your role. Mm-hmm. As mayor of New York City at a time when Republicans are criticizing, criticizing cities, including where we are now, Chicago, on issues like crime. But you're a mayor and a former cop. What is the winning message on crime for a former prosecutor as she campaigns for president of the United States? Uh, and I think that's an amazing question because this is what I've been talking about for so long. We have a great product in a Democratic Party. We're leading the voice around getting rid of assault rifles, about being proactive and not placing people on pathway of criminality. And we need to sell that. And unfortunately, we've allowed uh, the belief that Democrats are soft on crime, and we're not. Crime is dropping in New York City and many of the cities uh, where our mayors are located. I was speaking with the Atlanta mayor a few days ago. Uh, We're seeing a real focus on public safety. I say it all the time. It's the prerequisite to prosperity. That's the leading message coming out. Affordability, public safety is crucial to this election. We spoke earlier with the mayor of San Francisco, which has been held up as the poster child uh, for crime in this country by Republicans criticizing progressive policies when it comes to crime and safety. Chicago, where we are now, he compares to Afghanistan. Donald Trump refers to New York City as a war zone. You're talking about crime statistics. Do you start putting up billboards? How do you get the facts delivered? Oh, it's so it's so important. And, you know, one thing is when someone used an analogy of saying things are out of control in New York City, Mm. uh, our subway system with 4.1 million riders, we have an average of five felonies a day. We want to get rid of them. But let's put it in perspective. Mm -hmm. Our robberies are at the lowest record in, in recorded history. And when you look at all the major crime categories are decreasing, Um, our economy has come back. Uh, New York City is a real model of how a Democrat can turn around a city and move it in the right direction. Well, of course, we don't just pay attention for New York City and, and the way in which crime is being handled, but migration also, considering you have had an influx uh, of migrants that the city have had to deal with. You've actually been somewhat critical of this administration in that regard. Kamala Harris is part of this administration. She was charged in the early days with taking care of the issue of the border. This is something Republicans are placing a lot of blame specifically on her for. Does she deserve some of that blame? Has she not played a role in what has happened in New York City? Well, first of all, we received over 212,000 migrants and asylum seekers, and I'm proud that not one child or family is sleeping on the streets of the city of New York as we manage that. And I've been extremely clear about securing our borders. And I think that when we look at blame to be placed, is the lack of real, true immigration reform. This is a country uh, where immigrants have always participated in the American dream, and we need to ensure that we have a pathway in doing so. And I am looking forward to sharing my ideas with the administration on some of the things we witnessed in New York and as national immigrant leaders have looked at what we have done in a level of uh, humanity that we have, we've shown. The key here is employment. You put people to work, they can pursue the American dream. If you don't, we take away that dignity. Mr. Mayor, federal prosecutors in New York served another round of grand jury subpoenas, this time directly to you in a corruption investigation that's been going on for the better part of a year now. You've made it clear that you're done talking about this, that you want the process to play out. Don't the people of New York deserve a little bit more of an explanation? 
than that. What the people of New York deserve is a very thorough review, and I feel confident when that review is done, uh, they're going to see that I did nothing wrong. Former law enforcement officer, uh, I know what it is to uh, ensure that laws are enforced. You don't break them. Mm -hmm. And then um, it's important that the people of New York have been made as disciplined and focused. My job is to fight on behalf of New Yorkers bringing back the economy like we have, making sure our streets are safe like we have, build affordable housing like we are doing. That is my focus, and not to be distracted. Uh, let the, the reviewers do their job. I'm going to do the job that the people elected me for, and that's to recover our city. Well, Mr. Mayor, when Donald Trump was uh, getting hit with all of these different indictments, some of the way in which Democrats were prosecuting the campaign against him was that he's too mired down in legal battles and he is distracted. And that's a lot to deal with even personally, let alone trying to be a leader. How are you navigating that personally? Why should New Yorkers not have doubt about your ability to do all these things at once? Well, I think that, as you indicated, this was going on for several months. And look where our city is. Uh, you have a mayor that managed 212,000 migrants and asylum seekers. The economy has been revitalized, more jobs in the city history. Uh, our subway systems are safe. 17,000 illegal guns removed off our streets. Our children are outpacing the state in reading and math. Uh, when you do an analysis of what I've done from tourism to safety uh, to product productivity to housing, you have to say to yourself, Darn, that guy don't get distracted. He knows how to run a city, just as I was a person that knew how to keep the city safe as a police officer. All right, Mr. Mayor, thank you so much for <laughs> making you. time to us in the city of Chicago, not in uh, your hometown <laughs> today here on Bloomberg TV and radio. We appreciate it. That is the New York Mayor, Eric Adams.